Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where today we'll be discussing the World's End Club. The World's End Club was originally released on Apple Arcade, however in May 2021 the full version of the game came to Apple Arcade and also to the Nintendo Switch. As the game was created by the creator of Danganronpa and the art design of the more recent Pokemon games, this was not a game I wanted to miss. I went into the game with an open mind as it was not intending to do what Danganronpa had set out to do, however I was expecting a similar calibre of storytelling with this game. The question is, did I get it? Story-wise is where this game excels, which is to be expected, but it quickly becomes apparent that this game is not a copy of Danganronpa. The opening of the game starts with Reicho, one of the 11 characters being forced into a survival game like Danganronpa. However, this quickly changes directions as the characters are able to escape. It is after this that the World's End Club is able to carve out its own identity and story. I feel that it does this very well, with all the characters feeling unique enough, and while some are annoying, they make for a good game. The story from here on out is very different to Danganronpa, and in some ways it even caters to a different audience. Whilst Danganronpa is definitely for teens and young adults, this is certainly for a younger audience. In some ways this hindered the story for me, as an added layer or dark story would have improved the overall experience. However, this is not to say that the story is lacking, it just never lives up to the levels reached in Danganronpa. The main crux of the story is that the apocalypse has seemingly occurred whilst the survival game was taking place, leaving the Go-Getters Club as the lone survivors of the world. They come up with a plan to make it back to Tokyo to see whether humanity has been wiped out. The characters are being followed by the mascot of the killing game, who keeps turning up from time to time. From this point on, the game is broken into chapters that are normally include three styles of gameplay. Cutscene or visual novel-esque scenes, which are all fully voice acted. These scenes are plentiful and present the story in a good way. The next style of gameplay are the camp scenes where you can talk to each member of the team. I found these to be a bit drawn out and didn't really add much to the game, to the point where I skipped most of these. And finally, the third style of gameplay is the 2D platforming, with the occasional boss battle. Each of the 11 characters are playable and has their own special ability. Each level is only a playable with a predetermined character based on the story, so swapping out or playing as your favourite is not an option, unfortunately. The platforming in this game is quite simple. There are some basic puzzles and whilst playing the characters only have one hit point and then they're dead. This can lead to some tedious platforming. The gameplay is quite slow and relaxing which puts an emphasis on the story. The boss battles however are where these levels shine. They are unique and play with the character's abilities very well. In some cases you will battle the boss with more than one character swapping in and out throughout the battle. The art style of the game is very similar to modern day Pokemon with the characters looking like they are lifted straight out of those games. This is to be expected as the artist worked on Pokemon Sun and Moon. At the same time, I think that the World's End Club actually surpasses the art style used in those games. The characters seem to pop more. Now this could be due to hardware differences, but I feel like this game improves over what they did on Pokemon Sun and Moon in terms of art direction. Overall, I enjoyed the experience, and as a game, World's End Club was a good one, but unfortunately not a great one. Whilst I could discuss the story a lot more, I did not want to include any spoilers within this video. There are some things that hamper the experience. Firstly, the gameplay. This was originally released on Apple Arcade, which emphasises mobile gaming. World's End Club fits this genre and as such, it does not live up to the other games available on Nintendo Switch. Now this gameplay would be fine for a visual novel such as Danganronpa, The Nonary Games or 13 Sentinels, but a focus on story could mean that the gameplay would not be scrutinised, as it is an extra to the story. However, those aforementioned series do have fun gameplay as well, but in the case of World's End Club, I feel like the story never really hits its stride. In some ways, the game feels like the first five series of Game of Thrones, where there is a lot of talking about how winter is coming, but nothing to suggest that it actually will. In this respect, World's End Club has a lot of talking, but not much happening, with the exception of the beginning and the ending of the game. It is difficult not to compare World's End Club with Danganronpa, which in a way affects my overall opinion of the game as it does not live up to Danganronpa standards. 
but at the same time and on its own merit there is a lot that could have been improved with World's End Club. The 2D platforming is basic and a bit bland. Unfortunately the story did not click with me as much as I hoped it would. Overall I would give World's End Club a 2.5 out of 5. I wouldn't recommend buying the game on Nintendo Switch but if you have Apple Arcade and can pick it up under your subscription then go for it. Have you played World's End Club? Let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you on the next one.